Hello everybody, I'm Neon Anamite and welcome back to Subnautica. After the recent update, the farming update, the developers have changed a bit how items are made in the game. So I need to make an update for the guy that have also made for the previous patch. Now some of the things have changed in Subnautica, so if, if you need for if you're looking for a specific item, then you can, you can uh, click on the images on the screen. They will lead you to the path of the video where a specific item is located. For those of you, for the beginning players, I recommend that you just keep watching. So for starting, you need equipment. Now equipment comes with the personal uh, menu on the on the fabricator within your life pod. Equipment and tools. For beginning, I recommend that you do a few items that are needed for successful gameplay. Items like the scanner, uh, survival knife, radiation suit, fins and air tank. Those items are the most needed at the beginning of the game and should be your biggest concern. Now, those items require from you to acquire rough materials, so we will cover those within this video. For beginning, we need to worry about air tank. Now, to get an air tank, you need two things. You need glass, that is made out of quartz, and you need titanium. Titanium is the first item we will, take, we will cover in this video. Now, for beginning, you will need titanium. Titanium can be acquired from two sources. One of the sources is a limestone. If you look closely, uh, nearby of your life raft, there should be this tunnel. This is a perfect source for beginning for uh, copper and titanium. Limestones are those chunks of earth that are located on the walls of this tunnel. And we have titanium. The other good source for titanium comes from the aurora itself. While you'll be exploring the sea level, sooner or later you should spot those metal fragments that the aurora have dropped. Those metal fragments can be turned within the fabricator for four titanium parts. Now the next item we need to worry about is, qu is quartz. Now quartz are those white crystals that are spotted all over the place. The best time for look for quartz is actually at night, but keep rem remember that during the night the behavior of some of the creatures within the sea will change. So for example, within the kelp forest, which you can see, uh, there are the stalkers. The stalkers are an aggressive type of creature during the day, they'll rather keep to the to the small area they have, but during night, the aggro radius increases, and you may actually accidentally aggro more than one stalker upon you. So I do not advise that you look for quartz during night time, at least not in within the kelp forest. The next tool on our list is the scanner. The scanner is uh, needed basically for scanning the blueprints to acquire better and more advanced items to build within your base, but also to scan the life form. Now, to make a scanner, you need two things. You need titanium and you need a battery. And for battery, you need something called acid mushrooms. You will need four acid mushrooms. Acid, acid mushrooms are very easy to locate. Those are the purple, purple mushrooms that are all over the place. However, keep in mind that if you attack the mushroom with a knife in order to acquire the seeds, the mushroom will fight bad back and release a cloud of acid that may damage you. So do they, I do not advise that you gather uh, the mushroom if you are low on HP. The copper, other very useful rare material that is needed to make batteries, comes only from a limestone. So you may want to actually dig every single limestone at the beginning of the game in order to acquire both titanium and copper. The copper will always be needed. The titanium, well also, because you need titanium to make base and later more powerful vehicles. Next on the list is an item called a knife, survival knife, and fins. Now, to make those two items, you need something called silicon rubber. For silicon rubber, and they have changed this since the previous patch, before the farming update, for silicon rubber, you need something called creepvine seed cluster. Before the update, you actually needed quartz to make a silicon. But now you need the uh, you need the seed clusters. Seed clusters come from a biome called the kelp forest. The kelp forest is easy to spot because of the all the weed that grow within this place, and also this is the place where you can encounter stalkers. Stalkers are an aggressive creature. They may and will attack you if you get within their range. The range increases during night time and is limited during night uh, during daytime. The seed clusters are the yellow glowing uh, things on the on the on the on the weed. So you can easily collect those without using any tool. 
It is basically advised to collect as many as you can, as, as much as the inventory space allows you to. The next two items on the list is a radiation suit that is needed to enter the Aurora in order to repair it, and also a thing called Habitat Builder. The Habitat Builder is the item required for you to be able to build an actual base within Subnautica, and you will need a base, because within the base you can uh, plant seeds, fruits, hold fish, and do a lot of other stuff. Because the, you won't be able to survive within this uh, life pod for, for a long time. So in order to get in order to get the habitat builder and the radiation suit, you'll need something called fiber mesh, lead plate, and also item called computer chip. Now, the computer chip comes from a table coral sample, silver ore, and quartz. While fiber mesh won't be won't be available at the beginning of the game. In order to acquire fiber mesh on your fab fabricator, you need to swim with a kelp forest with a knife and cut one of the weeds. As soon as you cut the weed and bring it to the bring, bring it to the fabricator, you'll be able to make a uh, fiber mesh. After acquiring fiber mesh, you need to worry about something called lead plate. Now lead plate comes from batteries. So in order to make a radiation suit, you will need to have two lead plates and two fiber meshes. The batteries once again come uh, acid mushrooms and copper ore. In order to make computer chips, you need something called coral table sample. Now, coral table samples comes from those red mushrooms that you can find within the subnautica world. And once again, in order to acquire them, you need a knife. Just swim next to them and swap them with the knife and you'll be able to acquire a few parts. Another item that you'll need in order to make a computer chip is something called silver ore. Now, silver ore comes from deeper parts of the ocean. You won't be able to find it within the first biome, the shallow water ones. The best area to look for them at the beginning is a geyser within the kelp forest. But if you won't be able to find the geyser, just swim around the kelp forest and start to look for chunks. If you see a sandstone chunk, try to break it and you probably should find two types of materials within it. Gold, which is Warning. later needed uh, within the game for more advanced it items. And also a thing called silver ore. Most of the times you should be able to find silver ore, but as it is random, sometimes you may just end up with, with lots of gold. Another useful item that the knife will allow you to acquire is common coral sample, which comes from giant coral tubes. The only way to acquire those is to use your knife on the queue, on the uh, on the tube. That item is needed to make to make bleach and to make first aid kits. Another item that you need to make bleach first and first aid kits is something called salt. Now salt comes from uh, two sources. One of the sources are those little, little uh, white raw material things that you can find within the Subnautica world. But also you can find salt if you later acquire something called filtration machine. That device within your base in exchange for power will generate salt and drinkable water. One of the next items I would like to cover is uh, something called fungus. Now fungus is needed for the bioreactor to actually work, but the problem is that even though that the bioreactor can be found at the beginning of the game, the fungus not exactly. Fungus comes from within the mushroom forest. The, the mushroom forest is normally behind the kelp forest. Now if you get close to the, to, to the mushrooms, there should not be any aggressive creatures within the uh, within the mushroom forest, so it should be easy for you to gather the, the fungus. Get to a tree mushroom and use the knife once again. You should be able to acquire fungus samples that will that are later needed to use for the for the bioreactor. Just keep in mind that getting to the mushroom forest will may be actually pretty hard and boring uh, if you try to do it without a vehicle or other kind of transportation. So a sea glide or a sea moth is actually advised in if you if you really want to look for them. Other than that, I would rather recommend that you look for the solar panel blueprint within the kelp forest. Another item that is needed uh, in Subnautica for more advanced stuff is something called Stalker Tooth. Yes, you heard correctly. You need to actually acquire the tooth of the creatures that try to kill you. Now, there are two ways actually to get the, the tooth. You can try to swim around the kelp forest and count on your luck and maybe, just maybe, you will be able to find the tooth. But then you can always try to produce those. Now, in order to actually produce the starker thief, you need something called a metal scrap. Put the scrap within your hand on the on the action bar, and then look for stalkers. When you finally find find a stalker, you may try two things. You can try to get as close as possible to him and throw him the metal scrap, which he sooner or later he should start to play with. And with, when he does, he will 
drop thief. But also we can try to give him the metal scrap. However, keep in mind that this may not always work. One of the last rare materials you probably need within the subnautica at the beginning of the game is something called crash powder. Now, crash powder is one of the most annoying rare materials in, uh, to acquire at the beginning of the game for new players. The crash powder comes from only one source. It's a little plant located within a cave. The plant actually is pretty dangerous and may kill you if you are not, not cautious enough. Those caves uh, with, with, the, with the plants are located within the shallow waters and are pro pre probably very easy to spot. Also, they will spot you sooner than you will spot them, probably. Most of the times when you will be swimming around the, the area, you sooner or later should hear this sound. If you s hear this sound, that means that the crash powder plant is nearby. Now, if you keep swimming towards it, sooner or later the crash plant will release the fish. The fish is very dangerous because it can damage you. The damage may range from little to instant kill. The crash powder is then like later located within the within the plant itself. However, keep in mind that this is completely random. From time to time, you may actually try to search around five crash powders, uh, five crash plants, and find none. But also, Emergency. you can maybe Ten search first your encounter and you immediately find uh, the crash powder within it. And that will be all for, for today's guide. If you guys still find something that is not clear or would like to see how to gather other materials, please put your questions in the section, in the comment section uh, under this video. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you liked the video, please press the like button, it helps a lot. And I hope to see you all in the next episode. Did it look like this before? Let's just repair it because I may by mistake blow up. And I would like to avoid that, to be honest, you know. Blowing up in this game is, is not, not, not my hobby, not, not a thing to do. Please, Moonpool, please. please.